Today we'll have some fun by turning Matthew McConaughey into Ryan Gosling. If you're watching on YouTube, you may want to enable the auto-generated English subtitles and even have them auto-translated to your language. In the description of the video, you'll find a download link for the final image, usable in PaintShop Pro X8 to 2021. You'll also find a link to one of my early tutorials, presenting two hidden color matching tools. We're going to use one of those tools, called Manual Correction. If you are not familiar with it, please have a look at that video first. As usual, I'm working in Complete Workspace, available under File, Workspace, Complete. I also have Tab Documents enabled, with Matthew and Ryan already opened as separate images. Let me temporarily disable Tab Documents to show you a few things, before we get started. For best results, we need both persons facing the same direction, and most importantly, we need similar lighting conditions in both photos. These guys have the light source placed in front of them, hence the similar shadows and highlights on their faces. Notice for example the similar shadow along their jawline, or the highlights on their nose tip, on their lips, and on their forehead. This makes them a good choice for today's toy project. Once we ensure similar lighting conditions, the next challenge is to color match the faces. Ryan's photo is more saturated, but the color palette is not that different compared to Matthew's. We can't match them perfectly, but frankly we don't really need to. We only need to get a realistic result. Later on, I'll also give you a little tip for improving the blending between the faces. In the final image, first I color matched the two photos, then I did the swapping. To be exact, first I white balanced them separately. It worked nicely because as I mentioned, their color palette is not that different. I will show you really quickly how I did it, but today we'll use the manual correction tool to map directly the colors of Matthew to Ryan because this potentially works in more cases. So the color grade of the result won't be the same. It will be similar, but not the same. In either case, we'll also need to do some fine tuning, but I'll save that for later. Okay, let's white balance Matthew using a Just Smart Photo Fix. We start by resetting everything with this icon over here, then we make sure that white balance is checked. As the note says, we are expected to mark neutral colors in the before pane. Black, gray and white. Actually, PSP automatically places marks on any of those colors, as long as they exist in the image. Since we don't see any marks right now, we know our photo does not contain any pure neutral color. So I'll just mark a spot that should be white, like the highlight on Matthew's nose. The after pane shows a live preview, and we can place additional marks, but I'll just use this one mark here. By the way, we can delete a mark by clicking on it. Okay, here's our balanced Matthew. Let's do the same for Ryan. First we reset everything, and white balance is already checked. But again, no neutral colors in the photo, so I'll just mark the highlight on his nose. And here's what we get, not bad at all. Just a little desaturation, and his colors are now pretty close to Matthew's. It is now only a matter of swapping their faces, but I will start from scratch, because I'm going to use the manual correction tool. With that one, we don't need to color match the photos beforehand. I'm also switching back to tab documents, but you don't have to. It's now time to bring Ryan's face into Matthew's photo. We start by roughly selecting the face with the freehand selection tool in freehand mode. No need to be precise at all because later we'll mask and fine tune it. Once we're done, we copy the selection to the clipboard from Edit, Copy, or hit Ctrl C on the keyboard. Back to Matthew, we go to Edit, Paste as New Layer, and we now have Ryan's face as a separate layer in the Layers palette. Of course it's huge, so we need to scale it down and align it with Matthew's face. 
Using the pick tool, I'm trying to match the distance between the eyes, the nose and the mouth. When transforming in Paint Shop Pro, try to not switch out of the pick tool until you're done. Switching to a different action will commit the transformation. It's like hitting the enter key in Photoshop. Nevertheless, we can do an even better job in resizing layers with minimal distortion, but I have a dedicated video just for that. Check the description for the link. Alright, the distances look okay, so it's time to color match Ryan. We'll use manual color correction, which is initially hidden. I have a dedicated video explaining everything, it is called Easy Color Match. The link is in the description, so you may want to check it out first and come back. In a nutshell, this tool lets us sample a source and a target color from different images or layers, and it maps the remaining colors accordingly. Let me cancel out because first we need to predefine the dropper tool settings. We certainly want the use all layers box checked, and for this example I'll use a sample size of 11 pixels. Next, I'm backing up Ryan's face just in case, by duplicating its layer, and we are now ready to use the manual correction dialog. We uncheck the preview option, over here, then we reset everything with this little icon, and we switch to the manual target color section. For the source color, I'll sample the highlights from Ryan's nose tip, and I'll do the same for the target color, but using Matthew instead. Very similar to what we did with white balance a few minutes ago. As long as we keep preview unchecked, we can try several times until we get a better match. We can turn the preview on to check the result and turn it back off for the next try. In any case, once we have something we like, we can also fine tune the hue, the saturation and the lightness with these sliders down here. I'm speeding up the video, adjusting the settings in this dialog until I get something decently matched. We'll further fine tune it using one or more adjustment layers after placing it on top of Matthew. Something like this looks okay for now, so I'm committing it. This is our color matched basis, and frankly it's not bad at all. The next step is to place Ryan on top of Matthew, so we switch back to the pick tool. The goal here is to align the eyes, the nose, and the mouth the best we can. This is crucial for the blending tip I promised to show you a little later. So take your time, but keep in mind that perfect alignment is not always possible, because it also depends on the photos. If the heads were not posed alike in the first place, this can prove quite a challenge, or even impossible. We are good here, although I see now that I should have selected a bit more of Ryan's right side. Anyway, notice that I'm not afraid to slightly distort Ryan's original proportions in order to get a better match, but don't go overboard. I'm also adjusting the opacity of Ryan's layer back and forth, so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, I think we're good. We can always reposition it again later if need be. We should now mask Ryan's face by clicking this mask icon down here, and then choose Show All. Ryan's layer gets automatically grouped in the layers palette, together with a white mask placed above it. Next, I'm switching to the paintbrush tool, then I reset the materials to black and white, with this icon, and I also swap them with this other little icon over here. I can now use the left mouse button for white, and the right mouse button for black. With masks, white reveals, black conceals. Meaning we can now hide unwanted parts of Ryan by painting them black on the mask layer. Since Matthew's layer resides beneath the mask group, everything we hide on the mask cause the corresponding parts of Matthew to show up. Similarly, in case of mistakes, we can bring back Ryan by painting white on the mask. Using a big round brush, with 100 opacity and zero hardness, I start painting black strokes around Ryan's face. Just make sure you paint on the mask layer, not on Ryan's. If your brushing is too slow, increase the brush step. A value around 10 should be fine in most cases. To quickly resize the brush, 
You can hold down the Alt key on the keyboard while dragging the left mouse button. The transitioning between the two faces is nice and smooth because our brush is very soft, it has zero hardness. It also helps to use a much larger brush than you may initially think and keep the center of the marquee relatively away from the area you actually want to paint on. We can also reposition or even transform the whole mask group using the pick tool. All right, I think this looks pretty good. Now we'll fine tune the color matching. And since I'm a big fan of non-destructive workflows, we'll do it with three popular adjustment layers for this task. We'll put them inside the mask group, so they only affect Ryan. I can't go into all the details today, but if you are interested in learning more about those adjustments, have a look at my advanced digital makeup video, which also covers masks. The link is in the description below. Back to Matthew and Ryan, the thing is that I won't really try to match Matthew's hidden face. Instead, I'll try to match only those parts of his skin that I can see. Like his neck or the top of his forehead. Of course by eyeballing, but the good thing with non-destructive workflows is that we can come back and readjust anything at any given time. We can already tell that Ryan's face is way too bright, and it also contains more yellows compared to Matthew's skin. We can initially tackle both these issues with an HSL adjustment, placing it between the mask and Ryan. I've already played around with the adjustments when I was preparing the video, so the settings I used here are minus 13 for lightness, and minus 12 for saturation. Keep in mind that all adjustments depend heavily on the basic color matching we did earlier with the manual color correction tool. So focus on the workflow, not the numbers themselves. In your projects, you may also need to do more or less adjustments compared to this example. You may want for example to also experiment with the hue slider in this dialog, and probably skip adding a white balance adjustment layer, as I'm going to do shortly. That said, let's also target the yellows on Ryan's face and dial their saturation down to minus 36. I know it looks a little darker than it should, but we'll fix that a bit later with a curves adjustment. So I'm committing my changes with the OK button. I think Ryan still looks a bit too yellow, so I'll punch up the red slightly using a white balance adjustment layer. Frankly, I'm doing this mostly to showcase this adjustment as yet another option. We could also target the yellows in our HSL layer and adjust their hue. Anyway, here we can target shadows, mid-tones and highlights and adjust their color with these sliders. Their sides display opposite colors. CMY on the left, RGB on the right. Additionally, we can decide whether the changes will also affect the luminance with this toggle box down here. I will only boost the reds just a tiny bit in the mid-tones, preserving their current luminance. It is hardly noticeable right now, but it can help when boosting the contrast, as we're about to do next. Let us now work on lightness and contrast with a curves adjustment layer. I've already covered curves in previous videos, including the ones listed in the description below. So if you are not familiar with this extremely versatile tool, you may want to watch one of those videos first and come back. First I'm brightening the mid-tones just a tad, to lighten up Ryan's face. The graph is very sensitive, so be gentle with the adjustments. This will do for now. Next I'm also boosting the highlights to improve their contrast. Again very gently. And I think we're pretty much done. You may also boost contrast in the darker tones, like so. But I don't, so I'm deleting this extra point by dragging it out of the graph. By the way, when deleting points, PSP has this annoying habit of screwing up the preview. Just click on an existing point and things come back to normal. So here we have it. At this point, you can fine tune further the adjustment layers 
or fine-tune the mask itself. Bring back for example parts of Matthew's forehead, using a black brush with reduced opacity. However, since we have aligned the two faces accurately enough, and they are already color matched, we can now use the blending tip I promised to show you. Make sure the mask is the active layer, and then go to adjust blur, Gaussian blur. With radius set at zero, nothing happens, but as we increase it, Matthew starts showing up. We obviously don't want to go all the way, but something around 20 or 30 gives us a nice blend here. Check out for example the forehead as I'm targling the preview. Gaussian blur is a destructive operation, so you may want to back up the mask before blurring it. Just duplicate it in the layers palette, then hide it and work with the copy. Note also that Gaussian blur is not the same with dropping the opacity of the mask group. In some cases you may get similar results, but Gaussian blur is actually blurring the mask itself. It does it in a very refined way, and most importantly, we can safely rework the mask. Take for example the tip of Matthew's eyebrow, which sneaks in, due to the Gaussian blur. We can bring back Ryan in that area, by simply painting it white on the mask. Gaussian blur also extends the boundaries of the mask, so we should clean up again the areas it is not supposed to affect, by painting them black as I'm doing right now. And here is our final result. I think it looks quite convincing, though some further fine tuning may be needed, here and there. Remember that we didn't try to match Ryan with Matthew's hidden face, but rather with the visible parts of his skin. So this is all for today, check the description for timestamps, download links and further references, and please stay safe. As always, thank you for watching.